Hi and welcome to this chapter on Azure Functions. So let's have an introduction and a quick understanding on Azure Functions. So this is the serverless compute service that's available from Azure. This supports a variety of development languages. So you can develop your Azure Functions in C Sharp, F Sharp, Node.js, Java or PHP. You can also have the ability to only pay for the amount you use. So if you choose something known as the consumption plan, you only pay for the amount of executions, the execution time, etc. You can integrate Azure functions with a variety of other Azure services. So why would you want to use Azure functions in the first place? So let's say you want to host a code. This could be a service running in the background or a service which needs to be invoked by another component in your application. Now for this code itself, if you want to host it on Azure, you might need to create a virtual machine and that virtual machine would be part of a virtual network. So here you need to maintain the virtual network and the virtual machine. Now if this is simple code that needs to be run, this can be an overhead in terms of maintenance and cost wherein you need to ensure that you have the virtual machine up and running and this can be an overhead when you just have functions that need to be triggered for a short duration of time. In such a case, you can port that entire code onto Azure Functions. Azure Functions allows you or alleviates the need for having the underlying infrastructure in place. So in Azure Functions, you only have the code which is running. You don't need to maintain the virtual network, the subnet or the virtual machine. Now, apart from running code has a serverless component in Azure, there are other features available with Azure Functions. And one of the prevalent features of Azure Functions is the availability of various types of triggers. So some of the triggers are, you can have an HTTP trigger, wherein your function can be invoked via an HTTP request. We then have a timer trigger that allows a function to run on a particular schedule. We can then have a blob trigger. So whenever blobs are added to a container, you can invoke or trigger your Azure function. You also have a queue trigger so whenever a message is added on to queue storage, you can have a trigger there as well. Now some important points. So when it comes to the costing aspect, you can make your Azure function part of something known as either a consumption plan or an app service plan. Now when you make your Azure function part of a consumption plan, one of the caveats is that you have a maximum allowable execution time of 5 minutes. This can be extended up to 10 minutes based on some configuration. But the positive point is that you only get charged for the number of executions, the execution time and the memory used. So if you have functions which just get triggered for a short duration of time, then it is ideal to choose the consumption plan but if you need your function to be run for a longer duration to have much more memory allocated to it if you want it to have background virtual servers assigned to it then you can ensure that the function is created as part of an app service plan so this is the key difference between the consumption plan and the app service plan for Azure Functions. For more details, check the link in the description. Learn with Wits Labs. Success certified.